So season two is here and that means that we have new weapons and even some rebalancing of existing weapons and attachments in a big way. So what's the meta in Warzone looking like? What's the best weapons that you should be using for Warzone to make sure that you can do the best you possibly can? Today, we're going to run down the top 10 loadouts and weapon builds for you so that you can stay ahead of the curve and have a competitive edge in your gunfights. As we go along, feel free to drop your preferred loadout down below if it isn't a part of what we'll see in this list. The meta is pretty healthy still, so there's a lot of things that can fit, even if it's outside of our main top 10 here and some honorable mentions that we'll discuss. If you enjoyed the video, though, find it at all insightful. Drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to help us out on the road to half a million subscribers. As well, if you decide to pick up the battle pass or anything else here in season two and like to help support the channel a little further, using creator code espresso is an entirely optional way to do so don't ever feel pressure to but if you do tweet me a picture i'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos like these legends on screen that said let's jump into it first and foremost let's talk about these seasonal changes because there were a few things here that are pretty noteworthy first on a base level certain weapons raven attempted to shake up the meta a bit there was a lot of weapons that were adjusted somewhat fundamentally but of the weapons in terms of the meta and weapons that we've talked about that are viable before there was five to six weapons here that definitely you should be aware of in terms of their base changes the sdg had its ads speed nerfed the c58 had its recoil nerfed the brand had damage multiplier nerfs the mp40 had damage range nerfs and as well the well gun had damage range nerfs there but here's the thing those are kind of inconsequential changes in regards to knocking anything out of major power positions or hardcore shifting the meta of the top 10 top 15 weapons nothing really got knocked out of contention just some situational play may be a little bit different where things get a little bit more concentrated and where you need to focus however with weapon builds is in some attachments there are two primaries though that i definitely think may be of interest in terms of changing you don't really get as much benefit out of them now as you used to but primarily for this i'm talking about incendiary ammo first this had a decrease to the base burn damage and base damage while also decreasing the overall damage range so in a practical sense incendiary now does almost a little bit more harm than benefit for how players will be using it you don't have as much base damage per shot you do less burn damage over time and that range for how effective it can be got dropped as well so we may expand upon this and a couple of other things you need to change here in a video coming up but honestly you may not want to waste the ammo slot on incendiary anymore same thing kind of with lengthened though it is still beneficial it's just not as beneficial this was adjusted in a kind of odd way where it dropped the bullet velocity bonus that you got from lengthened from 30 percent all the way down to 10 percent now so a significant change and it does still give you a bonus without any drawbacks but not as much a bonus that said keep that in mind and you'll see some of these changes here in these class settings but that said jumping into the weapon builds here at this some of these may seem familiar some of them will be adjusted slightly and some may be brand new altogether so firstly still I think that even though we had some adjustments here to the weapon I think the brand still reigns supreme in terms of easiest weapon to use overall and how much damage can actually output now we've talked about this before where we have the MX silencer the Queen's 705 Royal barrel the three to six times scope the Hawkinson stock tight grip fully loaded the polymer grip the 40 round Sakura mags lengthened and then the hand stop that's kind of a stable constant here on the channel as of recently I'm kind of curious to see when they're going to adjust this so that it's maybe knocked out of the meta but for right now it's still a weapon that is by and far one of the best weapons to use here outside of that though I have been playing a little bit recently with one that is recently made its way into maybe my new favorite category in terms of SMGs that being the well gun now the well gun is of course the season one introduction it was kind of a dark horse in terms of season one after it was introduced around mid-season but truthfully it can absolutely pack a punch with the right build for this I'd highly recommend you end up kitting this out for fire rate where applicable though you'll see I do actually sacrifice one checked box to increase the fire rate to sustain a little bit more damage per round but we have the recoil booster the Gawain short barrel both of those increasing your fire rate you can have an optic here I end up using the slate reflector I've seen a lot of people also using the GW03 iron sight which really isn't bad I think I'm gonna swap back and forth between that to see which one I like but it comes down to personal preference I know that you do get a slight benefit here in terms of additional ADS speed with the GW03 then I'll have the skeletal stock fleet and quick so I can end up maximizing my movement speed and weapon swap quickness the polymer 
polymer grip, the 64 round 9 millimeter rounds here. We're not opting into the Garenko rounds for that additional fire rate on top of the recoil booster and the barrel, but it is something that allows it to sustain a little bit more damage. Hollow point is the new ammo that I'm taking on my SMGs here so that I can end up getting a little bit extra limb damage as opposed to where I'm not really getting too much benefit, like we said, out of the incendiary rounds that we used to. So hollow point on that. And then to round things out, the hand stop for recoil control and accuracy. Next up, the MP40 still retains its place here as one of the top weapons overall in terms of SMG play. And again, we've talked about this build before, so we're going to kind of breeze through this. The recoil booster, the 317 millimeter barrel, the ISO 1M optic for those more precise iron sights, and giving you a little bit more additional ADS speed, the folding stock, unmarked and quick Azure perk 1 and 2 to give you a little bit more of that mobility. Polymer grip, the Garenko 45 round magazine for additional fire rate, hollow point, and the pistol grip here for a little bit more sprint to fire speed. Definitely still one that can get the job done and can still absolutely fry. Next is another Vanguard weapon before we jump over into some other weapons that are not Vanguard but still incredibly viable. The Automaton is one that I'm having an absolute blast with as of lately. We've talked about this build before and it kind of made the honorable mention list here, but I feel like it's kind of creeping its way back into the main meta, if you ask me. But as of recently, I kind of changed a couple of things here on this. Of course, a lot of the build itself is maybe what you remember. The MX Silencer, the Anastasia Sniper Barrel. I've changed the optic recently from the 2.5 to the 3 to 6 times optic. I really liked that on the Bren where I'm able to zoom in on an enemy that may be a further distance away and still be able able to track them with relative ease instead of having to be almost pixel precise. So I've been liking that ability to swap between one magnification or the other. So I've been running that on the automaton, the Anastasia padded, tight grip, fully loaded polymer grip and hand stop. I'll give you some additional benefits here in terms of control. Then I'll run the 75 round magazine just for that additional ammo capacity. And I'll go back and forth between lengthened and hollow point because I am playing this for longer range. I do like that additional bullet velocity, even though it may not be that 30% increase that it used to be. It's still very beneficial though. But that's the automaton having a blast with that one. But like we said, there are absolutely a handful of weapons that are still main top 10 meta weapons, if you want to call it that. Some of your best performing weapons that aren't necessarily Vanguard weapons. Still, I think high atop that non-Vanguard weapon list is that of the C-58 from Black Ops Cold War. This has been old reliable for quite some time. I absolutely love this weapon. And you may be familiar here with the class that we end up running with this. We've talked about it quite a few times, but still absolutely up there. So this, I ended up running the Agency Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Field Agent Grip, and the 55 round magazine. Great for control, great for damage per shot, and can absolutely get the job done. Then the Growl has still been up there. I don't know if this is being generous with this, where the Growl maybe shouldn't be this high in terms of listing, but I just have a blast with this thing, man. It is still incredibly easy to control. It's something that is very easy to manage, but even if each round shot may not be as powerful as a C-58, as a Bren or something like that, it just still feels at home. It feels like, to me, a Modern Warfare M4A1, how we've always talked about that's the jack-of-all-trades weapon, easy to pick up, whether you're a new player or a returning veteran, and just use it and do well with it. To me, this is what the Grau is, really, but to the next level of that. It's so easy to manage, it doesn't bounce, and it's something that can get the job done. For this, we always run the Mono Suppressor, Archangel Barrel, Tack Laser, Commando Foregrip, and the 60-round magazine. Try that out, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Then, in terms of other weaponry that is pretty solid, is the AK-47 from Black Ops Cold War. This one, this is kind of my go-to whenever I play Rebirth Island, but it is still very viable in Caldera as well. Though, at longer ranges, you may be better suited for something like a Bren, like a C-58, maybe even a Growl, just because there's a little bit more bounce with the AK-47 in terms of that recoil, but it absolutely is a heavy hitter. For this, we run the GRU Suppressor, the Spetsnaz RPK Barrel, the Axial Arms 3x Optic, the Spetsnaz Grip, and the 45 round Magazine. After that, kind of coming down to the wire here and finishing out our list here, rounding into the final couple, the Owen Gun from Vanguard is still such a phenomenal option in terms of your S. SMG and close quarters play. While we already put up the well gun and the MP40 here in this list, I'm still having a blast with the Owen gun. I think it did kind of fall a little bit behind the MP40 and the well gun as opposed to last season, but it's still very viable, still easily within the top 10 weapons in my opinion. So for this, I run the recoil booster, the Hawkinson rapid barrel, the 2.5 custom optic, the Ravenwood 1SO stock. That gives you additional hip fire accuracy and movement, but because of the adjustments that were recently made to the removed stock, the Raven 
Ravenwood is a little bit better of an option here in terms of overall usability. So that's something that I changed here from something you may be used to. Then the perks of Acrobatic and Quick, the Polymer Grip, the 72 round Garenko Magazine, Hollow Point for that additional limb damage, and the Hand Stop for a little bit more control. Outside of that, again, one that I think is on the sort of tail end of this top 10 per se, but still rightfully in there because of the TTK potential and everything that goes along with it, that is the AS44. Now, the AS44 isn't something that I would kit out for a long range play, but instead, I'd take it as the double rifle meta, where you have, say, a C58 or something like that if you really want to play for long range control. But then to shred up close and personal, that's where you want to use this AS44, because if you kit this out for rapid fire and for a little bit more mobility to use as maybe, say, a pocket AR as an SMG, it's something that the TTK is almost unrivaled in any degree from any of the 100 plus weapons within Warzone. For this, we run the recoil booster, the Empress Falcon barrel, the slate reflector, the skeletal stock, sleight of hand, fully loaded, the polymer grip, the Garenko 50 round magazine for that fire rate to increase it a little bit more, the hand stop and hollow point to increase that limb damage cannot go wrong with this i bet if you play it with rebirth you play those close quarters engagements you'll have a blast and same thing if you dual rifle meta within caldera it's an awesome choice the whitley is going to round out our top 10 here and this one is kind of going to have an asterisk here for this because right now it is solid but it could either go one of two ways it gets buffed where it's even more viable or other things fall down in the meta that makes this more viable or it's just something that's a little bit more of that honeymoon phase right now. Don't get me wrong, it is a solid LMG here, but it still is secondary to the brand, if you ask me, in terms of overall versatility. For this, though, I'd run the MX Silencer, the Gracie Mark IX Barrel, the 2.5, or if you want to do that three to six times optic here, you can use that. The CGC R4 Stock, Hard Scope for a little bit more control, fully loaded, the Polymer Grip, the Hand Stop, the 45 round magazine, and lengthened as well, since you're playing at a little bit more of a distance. That's going to round out the top 10, though but as always there's a couple of honorable mentions that honestly are phenomenal options i mean you still have the kgm 40 which is a new weapon and kind of is a hit marker machine in some regards but can still get the job done you may just want to make sure you have an additional couple of rounds before your enemy may return fire the modern warfare car 98k is that sniping standard i don't really ever want to take away from one of the top 10 power rankings here because it is something that's so static it is such a niche level of play but it is definitely the sniper you should be using if you are a sniper the cooper is still great the m4a1 is still solid the xm4 is still good and there's a handful of other weapons as we've talked about i'd probably wager that there's 20 25 maybe even 30 weapons Weapons that honestly can really hold their own in a lot of engagements it just really comes down to which situation you may be in at any given time where those power rankings can really shift but that said that's my pick for the top 10 loadouts and weapon builds here within warzone season 2 so let me know your thoughts down below is there anything that you guys have been using that you quite enjoy anything you don't necessarily agree with whatever the case drop your thoughts down below but if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on the video and if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things warzone all things season 2 we got you covered on the channel so if you're interested hit that subscribe button that said thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace